Hi all, I have a truly funny, entertaining and slightly instructive game to show you today. It's arguably uh, one of Magnus Carlsen's most outrageous bullet games he ever played. It occurred in the Lee Chess titled Arena 9th edition. I played in one or two of the editions and they are great fun. Every opponent's a titled player. So this is against Wizard 98, a Grandmaster opponent, uh, who's come in sometimes the top 10 in these tournaments. Let's see what happens. E4 from Wizard 98. Magnus plays C6. So will this be a Coracon defense? Will Magnus be playing like Anatoly Karpov in this game? The Coracon was a good weapon of choice against Gary Kasparov to get rock solid positions. Knight C3. But now, the first rule-breaking move for Magnus Carlsen, Queen A5. This seems to be uh, an interesting innovation in the Coracon, this early Queen move. Can't the Queen be harassed later? Knight, C f Knight F3. And now we have a very, very unusual move, putting into almost possibly absolutely unique territory already, F6. This seems to be a gigantic risk on Magnus's part. And I've got some Elon Musk quotations about risk to sprinkle in here. Uh, so Elon Musk is known to be a bit of a risk taker. He's an in innovator and dares to dream the big dreams. Further, he has the ability, the ability to actually make them happen. So that's what's been said of Elon Musk. And uh, I'll put a few of his quotes soon. So F6. You could also say the pawns are the fundamental constraints on the pieces. So by this pawn moving there, we have this diagonal. But this pawn moving here, don't we have this diagonal or the other way? Can the queen actually come back like this? In fact, is this Magnus's naughty triangular style maneuver here? <laughs> kind of putting the king where the queen is. And I've had this played against me <laughs> on Lee Chess a few times <laughs> to my annoyance, to my outrage, absolute outrage. This kind of swap. Yeah, this. <laughs> anyway, so can the Grandmaster opponent keep his nerve and play calmly to exploit this seemingly outrageous idea, if this really is the idea? D4. We see Queen H5. Yes, the Queen is moving again. What could it possibly be doing there? Bishop e2, as though there's going to be a discovered a attack against the queen, for example, like this. King d8, giving the queen a cheeky escape square after knight e8. So hitting the queen, taking away f7 and g6, but not e8. <laughs> so is this mission accomplished? Okay, now here's a quotation from Elon Musk. Failure is an option here. If things are not fa failing, you are not innovating enough. Well, Magnus has really innovated quite a lot already in this bullet game, probably more than any other grandmaster in the history of chess so far. This seems to be very, very unusual stuff. Knight d3, and we see e5. There's actually a perk of the queen being on e5 to support this pawn. White castle here. Perhaps better, a critical test, according to Stockfish, is to take, so that leaves a fixed target, as Nimzovich would say, restrain, blockade, and then destroy. And then actually it could be immediately attacked and at least open up this bishop on these dark squares, stopping the king's escape, etc. White should be fine there. And also just maybe even d5, although maybe black can get a respectable, respectable style of position, even though black has less space. It's not as though the king's going to be mated immediately. So there are two ways to playing the position, but I think taking uh, was was the strongest. But white castled, and in fact, Magnus actually wins a pawn. Yes, the opponents may have thought there's no way with the king on d8 that this is going to survive. This king here, and Magnus dares to take the other pawn. C3, d5 which does give scope for the bishop to come to d6. Without a defensive knight on f3, h2 might actually be a target here, believe it or not. Bishop f3, queen h4, c takes. And here, uh, Magnus plays another super risky move. Queen takes d4. 
And I'm actually reminded of Elon Musk's other quotations. Uh, one of them to young people just graduating was basically, <clears throat> I also think people tend to overweight risk on a personal level. And he goes on to say, when you know, when you're out of college, you don't have too many responsibilities like kids, a mortgage, etc. And so he says, you know, what what do you risk? Uh, you know, so to encourage people to start their own company, you know, be entrepreneurial. And here we see that in chess on the faster time limits, especially online. What do we risk? And especially bullet chess, it's just meant to be fun anyway. This is a this is a kind of gigantic provocation as you know taking this pawn. It it turns out actually, g five can be close to being an, an equal position according to Stockfish, believe it or not. For example, like this, uh, where knight h six is quite nifty using the h six square to go into g four, and if if Black can really do this and get the light square bishop. Black's got some chances. White's edge might only be slight there, believe it or not. But among this goes, increases the risk level and the provocation to the absolute maximum. We have Bishop e3, Queen h4. So white has cleared the d file when he's ready to sort of crash through. Knight c3, Bishop d6, g3. So there was actually a mate threat here, which is parried. Queen h3, Queen b3. Everything's eyeing now this blast on the d file to smash through on d5 and surely this king is just outrageous absolutely outrageous all these pieces just lurking around in bed on the back row surely the king's going to have a hard time if this d file uh, is crashed through this is going to be a nightmare surely for the black king we see knight e7 rook a d1 getting ready for this blast on d5 now we see h5 as though, hang on, the rook is developing. If it can open up the h file, it will join on the attack on h2. Knight f4 hitting the queen. An interesting principle here. We notice from Leela chess games, when Leela gives up a bishop of a certain colour, the other colour is often much more celebrated. Here actually, Magnus did give up the dark square bishop. And really, it relieves the pressure that the knights can have on the light square. So leaving that queen attack uh, intact, rather, not attacked by the uh, knight. So it does actually support a light square attack, basically. Bishop takes f4, as well as being uh, one of the only moves. So with less pressure now, bishop takes, and then we have h4. And here, there's another interesting Elon Musk quotation. Persistence is very important. You should not give up unless you are forced to give up. And that really maybe is the case here, that all these pieces on the back row, but there's still a dream here of crashing through on the H file. Magnus is keeping the dream alive. Knight takes D5, but now surely this battery, or rather this battering down of the D file is going to be decisive. It looks extremely scary. Surely no one can survive this against the Grandmaster opponent not even Magnus Carlsen. Knight takes d5, queen takes. The knight shields, okay, at least it has finally moved now, woken up to do something for the king. Queen d6. Here, white misses a more clinical continuation to cover some escape squares with rook fe1. So if hg, there's a forcing sequence. Bishop c7 check, queen d6 check, queen e7, and now rook c1 check, and the king's brought out to be checkmated basically like this it would really be checkmated but white missed this extremely powerful forcing sequence so that was with rook fe1 as a prelude to bishop c7 instead white played queen d6 which kind of gets in the way of the bishop for the bishop c7 forcing move so it looks very lucrative though to sort of cut the king off like this and play queen c7 checkmate if given one or two moves hg so that is technically threatening checkmate. Bishop takes g3. If queen c7 check, believe it or not, black will be running for safety here and actually be better, believe it or not. If the king gets the g6, there's uh, not a problem here, it seems. For example, this continuation. Black is the exchange up. Big advantage, believe it or not. So bishop takes g3. The king does make a run for it, king e8. Now, in the art of war, there is a principle uh, that before 
going uh, to put yourself beyond defeat basically before going on to the attack. Now the king does try and stroll into safety before carrying on the attack here. So we have these translations concretely in this game of these great principles. King f7 check, queen d3 check. And now uh, Bengus played kind of a cheeky move. Maybe he knew it was flawed. But if he can get away with it, the pawn structure is intact and he's not creating any further weaknesses on the dark squares, which intuitively would occur if f5. I assume Magnus was kind of aware he was busted and didn't play f5. Because if he can get away with this, king h6, then that would be great. But there should have, you know, perhaps, ideally, there's a red flag that should be brought up in our minds when we play chess, when there's an unprotected piece or any other visual downsides which a flag should be waved mentally and say well how can, how can you exploit that downside and there's a tactical downside here an unprotected piece the queen has not been protected anymore instantly with this interruption and how would you exploit it if you were playing with white here if I give you five seconds so that's the clue unprotected piece what would you play okay the grandmaster played queen e3 check missing Bishop f4 check. It is only a bullet game though. And that would have be hitting the king and the queen. So winning the queen. Uh, there's no king g6. So if g5 then snapping off the queen. That would have been a huge advantage clearly. So queen e3 check. We have g5 here. Now rook d6. Uh, another very strong move is actually rook d4 for rook h4 check. And this for example wins the queen as well. So the black king is really in big trouble here but rook d6 queen f5 king h4 king g6 and now it's actually equal technically remarkably according to stockfish queen b3 so this looks at f7 on h takes g in fact black with this active rook i know these pieces are still asleep can actually whip up something quite dangerous with check check and mate so that's very interesting. And here, queen e1, this would just be better for black. Big advantage. Black's material up. King's okay. But uh, queen b3, uh, rook f8 was played. So that's to parry the entrance on f7. hg. And now actually, knight c5, queen e3, queen takes g5. Queen d4 and now bishop g4. So things are installing on light squares all of a sudden. And in fact, there's also this forcing move which could be very handy. This check here in conjunction with a potentially dangerous h file. So another risk quotation from the great Elon Musk. It's okay to have your eggs in one basket as long as you can control what happens to that basket. So that's very interesting because uh, usually it's it's better to diversify. Has Bengals put all his eggs in the h-file basket? Well, maybe, as long as he doesn't get mated here. Bishop f4, queen f5. We have rook d5, but now check and knight e6. And this not only hits the queen, it takes away potentially an f4 escape route if ever the king wanted to escape to f4. We have queen e3. Rook h8, and you'll note that a lot of escape squares are being closed down quite rapidly by Magnus now. All of these escape squares, including this escape route, is being cut off. We see bishop h2, and in fact here, Magnus plays brilliantly here. Black to play, if I give you five seconds, he takes his chance now. The threat that did try and shield, by the way, queen h1, which will be... Uh, chat mating after queen h3 king g3 queen h3 so that was trying to shield but alas black to play five seconds what would you play in this position okay rook takes h2 check then the other one comes in for the check and now queen g1 and you can see that f4 square being taken away which makes this check lethal it's actually chat mate so this is to me one of the most outrageous Magnus Carlsen bullet games I've ever seen in my life. It's so cheeky. It's that um, 
<laughs> switch of king and queen which has infuriated me personally as well in bullet chess when people have played that against me certain ims like offer wasn't terroriz terrorizing me on hyper bullet especially with these these style of openings and to see magnus doing this to a grandmaster opponent wow i think there is a certain shock value a certain disturbance of thought distraction of thought and magnus really piled on the provocation when he took that center pawn it sort of set a route up for for white to sort of try and exploit the default clearly and the king just made for it run for it and then there was this vicious counter-attack after wow just wow i hope you enjoyed it as much as me if you did check out the bitly link so uh, there's the bitly link to capital y small v small a five capital m capital b like five megabyte at the end i hope you enjoyed this video come and challenge me and other youtubers at chess world with that bitly link Okay, thanks very much.